Lucas's favorite dishcloth pattern is a very easy pattern for all crocheters, beginners, or experts. It's a perfect cloth to use for household cleaning or personal cleaning. If you do choose to make this for household cleaning, I do recommend 100% cotton yarn. If you're choosing to use this for personal cleaning, feel free to use any yarn that you're comfortable with touching your skin, so long as it is a cotton blend. That's for hygienic reasons. You can throw these in the wash and, and disinfect them as needed. But for household items, I do recommend 100% cotton, such as sugar and cream, or peaches and cream, or this cotton yarn from Walmart. For demonstration purposes, I'll be using brightly colored acrylic to help you see the stitches and what I'm talking about. You'll need a crochet hook. Size doesn't matter as long as you like the fabric you create. For these dishcloths and the sugar and cream or peaches and cream cotton, I used a size G crochet hook. That is a four millimeter crochet hook. For this demonstration, I'll be using an I five and a half millimeter crochet hook. You will need a pair of scissors and a darning needle to sew in your ends. Let's begin. To start, you'll put a slip knot on your hook. And you can move the slip knot across your hook. You don't want this to be too tight. You'll begin by chaining 29. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 5, 26, 27, 28, 29. Once you have 29 chains, you're going to start by putting a single crochet into each chain across the row. Starting with the second chain from your hook. That's this chain right here. We never count this one in single crochet, just the second chain here. To do a single crochet, you'll enter the stitch, pull a loop, wrap your yarn, and pull through two loops. Enter the stitch, Pull a loop, wrap your yarn, pull through two loops. You'll continue to single crochet across the row. If you're an advanced crocheter and would like to use the foundation single crochet, that's perfectly fine. You're going to need 28 stitches. If you're a brand new crocheter, the chain stitch is perfectly adequate. And as you're crocheting, don't worry if your work starts to curl or if you have larger holes, that will work out over time. When you complete the row, you should have 28 stitches. The first stitch of your row will be a little bit squat compared to the rest of the stitches. And it'll look sort of diagonal and leaning when compared to the other stitches. Don't forget to put a stitch into this loop on the side in your next row. To move to row two in every subsequent row in the pattern, you're going to chain one and turn. The chain does not count as a stitch. For row two, we're going to single crochet in the back loop only. To do that, you turn your work to face you, and you see these two V's of your first stitch. Your hook should go in this back loop. You will single crochet across the row in the back loop only. What this is doing it's, is it's creating the ridges that you see from our demonstration cloth.
Continue to single crochet across the row, and I'll meet you when we get to the end. Now that we're nearing the end of the row, I wanted to point out again that that last stitch has been turned and looks a little bit squat compared to the other stitches. You're going to want to put a stitch in this back loop. Right here. At the end of row two, you should still have 28 stitches. You will chain one and continue in pattern by single crocheting in the back loop across for every row. Continue stitching and I will meet you after a few more rows have been completed. After several rows, you can start to see the pattern coming through and the ridges forming with the back loop stitches. I wanted to point out how I keep track of what row I'm on in this pattern. So with your tail end on the right hand side, if you are a right hand crochet, it would be on the left hand side if you're a left handed crochet. With your tail end, on the side of the hand you crochet with, you'll see you have a ridge and a dip, 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 right there. Each ridge counts for two rows, so you can count it two, four, six, eight, ten, or one ridge, one row for the ridge, one row for the dip. One row for the ridge, one row for the dip. You are looking for 25 rows. That'll get you the size of this pattern here, or the size of the, uh, the favorite dishcloth. I'll show you the example here. You have a ridge and a dip, a ridge and a dip. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, and then there's a row at the top. You'll continue in pattern for 25 rows and you'll know you've you'll know when to stop. When your tail end is on the side of your dominant hand, the one you hold the crochet hook with, and your working yarn is at the opposite corner, and you have 25 rows or 24 ridges. To, uh, not 24 ridges, that's a huge cloth. <laughs> 12 ridges. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24. 12 ridges. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. That's the size of Lucas's favorite dishcloth. And then I always will complete another row, another half ridge, so that my working yarn is on the opposite side of my tail. I don't count these rows. I count. I don't keep track of the rows with a row counter. I track based on these ridges. Makes it super easy for TV crocheting or crafting when you're listening to music or an audiobook. You don't really have to keep up with it. Once you've reached your desired size, whether it's this size or a different size, always make sure that you're working in and your tail end are on opposite sides. I'm going to continue for one last row and then I will show how to bind off. Now 
You notice as I'm stitching, I turned the work ever so slightly to be able to easily see those back loops. It's a little trick that I've learned over the years of making these cloths. I've probably made thousands of them at this point. If you crochet the size recommended for the pattern using a G hook, you can get two of these full size cloths out of one ball of peaches and cream. Once you've reached your desired size and you have your tail end and your working yarn on the opposite sides, you're going to go ahead and clip your yarn. And you'll pull that yarn, the tail end, through that last loop and tighten it down. Now you're ready to weave in your ends. You'll eventually develop, if you are a new crocheter, you'll develop your own method of doing this. But I like to flip it backwards so that I can see the V's very easily from this row of stitches. And I'll just take my darning needle and run it through a few of these V's. I'll go one direction for a few stitches and then pull it through. Then I'll go back the other direction but I always skip the leg of the V that I came out of and I go back through the middle in the opposite direction. It can be somewhat tight to do this depending on how tight you crocheted. I'll go through a couple stitches and pull that through. And then for the sake of good measure, I will go back a third time, again, skipping over the first leg of that V and going through the middle. And then going back through some stitches. On this last pass, I will also pierce a couple of stitches and go through some of the fibers of the stitch. That will also help secure your end. To maintain square corners, I always pinch that end and tug ever so slightly on that end so that it does not pull the end of my work in. Once you've done those passes, you're ready to snip off the end or your little tail and do the other side. Again, I turn the work to see the bees and we'll work through a couple of these stitches. It's hard to see behind the camera. <laughs> if you're an experienced crocheter, use your preferred method. If you're a new crocheter, you will eventually find your own way of, of weaving an ends that works best for you and your situation. Use whichever method you're most comfortable with. I've been crocheting these cloths in this manner for around 25 years. I've not had one come undone yet because of an end that unraveled. I have had them come undone because somebody was a little aggressive with a knife and cut it, but <laughs> not because an end came out. And if you're using a natural fiber like cotton, like 100% cotton, it will eventually felt on itself and you'll, it'll never come out. So you have it. There's a little example of the, the Lucas's favorite dishcloth. Here is... Another example that the ends need to be woven in. Now, some tips and tricks. If you want a larger cloth than this, feel free to chain more chains and work more rows. 
The only thing to keep in mind is that however many chains that you chain your stitches, the number of stitches will be one less than what you chain. So if you chain 50, you'll have 49 stitches. I typically like to make it in this rectangle shape because it is the size of my hand without folding. And that gets rid of some of the bulk. So if you're trying to clean inside a glass, you don't have a lot of cloth in your way. There you have it, my friends. Lucas's favorite dishcloth.